Welcome back to the Prince Armory Academy. We'll be crafting these leather pauldrons as we continue building towards the full suit of armor inspired by the Berserk series. The leather we'll be using is Weaver Select 9 to 10 ounce vegetable tan leather, which you can get from Weaver Leather Supply, along with any other tools and materials that you'll need for this build. The first thing I'll do is trim away some of the bits that I know I won't be using, just to make the hide a little more manageable and so that it lays flatter in later steps. And if you're following along at home, you would scale and print out the PDFs and then lay out the patterns and trace them onto the leather at this stage. Just to refer back to some of our beginner to intermediate lessons for many tips and demonstrations on hand cutting leather. If you would like to make this army yourself, the patterns for the full suit can be found at our academy. We also provide SVG files for laser cutting as well, and I'll be using the Nova 16 laser from Eon Laser USA. This next tip only applies if you have a larger format laser cutter, but the bed of the Nova 16 is large enough that I can put the whole hide in, and after doing a test frame to outline the cut area, I can simply trim away the rest of the hide without even needing to measure the cut area. These are some magnetic hold downs that are 3D printed and have a bar magnet inserted. They work pretty well, and if this interests you, I'll be releasing this design for free at our academy sometime in the coming weeks. It's always a good idea to do a test cut somewhere on the hide especially when working with leather because each hide can vary a little. Here I just added a few ovals in the laser cut software at a few different speeds and power levels just to verify. In the top layer in the software, I'll have it do a cut pass at a very low power to add the decorative and reference markings. On the second layer, I'll have it cut out the holes. And on the third layer, it will perform the final cuts. It's often the case that you will get a lot of scorching on leather when laser cutting, but after some testing I found that lowering the power and slowing things down, things will turn out very clean. Some more testing is needed, but then I'll make a laser cutting guide. One quick thing before we continue. This tutorial is made using the newer 1.1 versions of the patterns. If you purchase the early access version, be sure to log into the academy and grab the latest files from your downloads area. Okay, let's move on. Next you'll shape and tool all of the pieces. This is the same process as demonstrated in the previous tutorials in this series, and I'll do a recap in the next video if you need a refresher, so I'll skip narrating these steps for now. If you like this type of content and would like to support us, please like, comment, and share, and consider checking out our sponsors and buy our armor patterns if you'd like to make these projects yourself. I'll have links to everything in the description below. This project is more of an advanced build though, so if you're just getting started, be sure to check out our free getting started guides and affordable beginner patterns. I find that the best time to do the assembly is just before the pieces are dry from dyeing and finishing. This way all of the pieces will dry and harden together in their final ideal shape and location. But you don't always have that luxury, so if you can't get to the assembly during that period, you can also soak the pieces in hot water to soften them up a bit. Not boiling, just as hot as you can get from your tap, and this will make assembly easier too. We'll start the assembly with parts D and E. I'm shaving down a little thickness on the inside of the underlapping piece, which will allow for a tighter fit. I like to use medium double capped rivets for this project, and these can also be found at Weaver Leather Supply. Riveting these two pieces together will form the pointy end piece of the pauldrons.
Sometimes shaped pieces can be stubborn when trying to line up the holes. To help line up the rivet holes, you can use something like a nail or a modeling tool. Next, we'll rivet part D to part C. In this revised 1.1 design, all of the pauldron parts are symmetrical, so it's much easier to put together. You don't have to worry about which piece is the right or the left side. To finish the main pauldron assembly, you'll rivet parts B and C together. You can go ahead and attach the buckle end of the straps as shown here. Having two small buckles on either side of the center point will help guide the resting position of the pauldron while also allowing it to hinge freely from the top. Now we can build the lower segments of the pauldrons with parts F through I. These will have floating articulations with retaining straps, which will allow for good mobility. There are shapes that are used as reference marks to show you where each strap goes. The thinner straps with the star icons go on the inside, and the chevrons go on the outside. I find it easier to start the assembly with the straps at the bottom, which is part I. Also note that for smaller components like this that are not likely to experience a lot of load, it's fine to use small rivets here. These lower segments are also symmetrical, so you don't have to worry about which side is left or right, but each piece is also slightly different in shape and size, even if they look very similar. So pay attention to the lettering on the reference marks as you assemble your way up.
you can see the functionality that this method of articulation allows. To attach these bottom limbs with the pauldron base, you can simply use two Chicago screws. But don't use a normal double cap rivet here. We use Chicago screws to allow for pieces to hinge and also to withstand higher forces. And this connection point is likely to receive more stress. The last thing you'll need to do here is to add a strap to hold the bottom of the pauldrons close to your upper arm. Join our growing community of like-minded, crafty, and creative people. It's a welcoming place to share your work, get help with your crafting projects, and connect with thousands of creative people. If you're following along with the build, you may be wondering where part A goes, but this piece attaches directly to the breastplate. It's actually more of a transition piece and not technically part of the pauldron's function. Up next, there's just one more quick tutorial to cover for the elbow piece, and then we'll go over that in the next video and reveal the full suit, which is already complete. So check back soon if that video is not already out by the time you watch this. But in the meanwhile, here's a preview of the pauldrons.